Hello class, welcome to the next segment in the week 13 material. In the previous segment we looked at uh, the numpy mean function and in this segment we're going to take a look at the numpy max and the numpy min function which behave in sort of a similar fashion it's just a slightly it's just a different operation being performed. So just to sort of start off with we still have the same exact two-dimensional array that we had earlier essentially the same program except here instead of 2 dim dot mean zero we have 2 dim dot max zero. So again the same sort of idea applies here. Uh, by doing dot max zero, we want to take the maximum value across the zeroth dimension, which we can sort of think of as our rows, uh, the rows of our array. And by taking the dot max of the zero, so the way the computer is going to read this off is it's going to join the rows together. So again, the five goes to the 11 and with the 22, just like in the mean function, and also the eight goes to the 13. Uh, and the 25 and the 6 and the 16 and the 26 all uh, get involved in the operation. And uh, the way the computer is going to do this is going to take this set of numbers that you're taking the max across and it's going to pick the maximum value out of all the numbers that you're giving it. So dot max zero does in fact mean, remember we're joining the rows together and taking the maximum, so we're taking the maximum of these three values right here, which from visual inspection we can see is 22 and the maximum from this set of numbers right here, which is in fact 25, and then the maximum of these three numbers right here, which is in fact 26. So it's sort of the same idea. Uh, the, the numbers that you have, <coughs> excuse me, the rows that you're taking the maximum across sort of ties back to the mean function where uh, you split all the rows up and sort of join them together, and then each values that you get uh, from doing that, so in this case the 5, 11, the 22, taking the maximum of those values will in fact give you 22, taking the maximum of these values will in fact give me 25, and taking the maximum of these values will in fact give me 26. So just like with the last, uh, the last video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you guys the opportunity to do this exercise on your own. So here I'm going to change the value in the parentheses here from a 0 to a 1, and I want you to go ahead and quickly determine uh, pause the video and quickly determine what you expect the end result of this operation to be dot max one on the array that we have up here. All right, so hopefully the result that you came up with if you attempted the exercise looks something like this. So just like before, uh, we'd combine the columns together. So the five, eight, and six go together and we take the maximum of those values, which is eight. And then the 11, 13, and 16 go together, so we take the maximum of those values, which is 16. And then the 22, 25, and 26 go together, and we take the maximum of those values, which is 26. And this would be the result we get back from doing dot max 1 on our, on our array. So that's the maximum function. We can also take a look at the minimum function, which does basically the same thing as the max function, except instead of taking the highest value, it takes the lowest value. So again, I'll go ahead and put the two-dimensional array up on the screen here, and I'll actually go ahead and again ask you guys to pause the video and try to determine the result of dot min zero and dot min one. Alright, so if you attempted the exercise, hopefully the answer that I'm going to show looks something like what you got. So saying dot min zero, again, we want to take the minimum value across all the rows here. So the 5, 11, 22 go together, and we take the minimum of that, which is 5. The 8, 13, and 25 to go together, and we take the lowest of those values, which is 8. And then the 6, 16, and 26 go together, we take the lowest value of that, which is 6. So this would be the result we get back from dot min zero. And if we switch over to the columns by saying dot min one, now we get... Uh, join the 5, 8, and 6 together, take the lowest of those values, which is 5. The 11, 13, and 16 go together, and we take the lowest of those values, which is 11. And then the 22, 25, and 26 go together, we take the lowest of those three values, which is 22, to get a result that looks like this. So hopefully that kind of makes sense how that works. Uh, you might need to walk through the process a little bit more to sort of get a firmer grip on how exactly it works. But uh, I do want to go ahead and, just like the previous segment, I want to go ahead and tie this back to uh, the data set that we're actually working with. So 
um, again, the value that you put inside the parentheses here, that corresponds to the dimension you want to apply the max operator to. So if I want the maximum applied to the time that is uh, looking from months 0 through 24, give me the maximum sea surface temperature that value that you have in those 24 months, and then that will give me back uh, the result. Again, just like the mean function, the max and min function reduce the dimensionality of the array. So earlier when we had the two-dimensional array, applying the max and min gave us back a result that was a one-dimensional array. And then the same thing holds with the max and min function when we apply it to a three-dimensional array. We take the max across a dimension and we go from something three-dimensional to something two-dimensional when we apply the max and min operators. So here you have the underscore data dot max zero. So that means take the max take every single timestamp and take the maximum sea surface temperatures values across those times, take that result, which will become a two-dimensional array, and put it on the left-hand side here, which is time max. And then the underscore data dot max one, I would take a maximum across every single latitude. And if I wanted that result, then I'd simply do this. That gives me a two-dimensional array back, which goes in the variable lat max. And then the lat dot max, uh, uh, excuse me, the data dot max two that will in fact take the maximum across the longitude dimension and it will take that two-dimensional data, uh, that two-dimensional array and put it inside a variable called lon max. And then same idea with the min function. So if I was interested in the minimum value across every single timestamp, then I could say the underscore data dot min zero. Remember the underscore data is defined up here and we get that from this. So we would set up something like this. So this variable time min will store the minimum values across, uh, the minimum values that we get from the time uh, taking the minimum across the time, which is again a two-dimensional array, and then same idea down here, except here I'm taking the minimum across all the latitudes and storing that in lat min. Again, that's a two-dimensional array. We go from something three-dimensional to two-dimensional, and then the minimum across all the longitudes, we perform that operation here, and that then goes on the left-hand side, which is stored in a variable called lon min. So that's the NumPy max and min functions in a nutshell. Uh, there is one more segment that uh, explores something called the plot pixels function, which is a custom defined function that you guys uh, will use to generate some nice pretty pictures. But as far as the assignment is concerned, you should have the necessary material to complete the CGI script portion of the uh, final assignment. And in the next segment, we'll give you guys the last uh, bit of information you guys need to complete the final portion of the assignment, which is generating a whole bunch of pictures, a bunch of pretty plots of sea surface temperature data. So with that, I will see you guys in the final segment.